Hello friends and welcome back to another video from Carolina's Cottage. This is Johnny and today we have so much packed into this video. I'm going to be using two of my three favorite IOD stamps in these projects. So let's take a look at what I have here. Let's get started with the video and I'm glad you all joined me today. The first thing we will do on each of these pieces is remove the price tag and any stickers that are on it and give it a good cleaning. To remake this piece, I'm going to be adding some feet on the bottom and I'll be giving it a couple of coats of chalk paint. I noticed on the sticker that this was a utensil holder from Target and I thrifted this at Goodwill. A small thing like adding feet to these pieces really helps dress them up. I used two kinds of glue to help these feet adhere. I used hot glue for a quick hold, and then I also added a wood glue to help secure them a little better. I'm measuring for placement of the stamps that I'm going to apply here. And um, these are a set from the Spring 2024 Iron Orchid Design stamp set. This is the Veranda stamp set and I will have information on this in the description below. This is such a great set of stamps. There are two pages in the veranda set and it's I think it's going to be one of my favorites. Cutting these pieces apart makes them a lot easier to use. I'm just using ribbon that I thrifted. This is rather shabby chic. Um, what I will do here to make a shabby bow is use a little crafting tool that I bought on Amazon, which I will link below, but you can also just make um, just kind of informal loops, maybe three to six loops on each side, and then tie a string around those loops uh, you don't really need the tool if you don't have one, but um, you just want to make a very loose, shabby, rustic bow here. It just dresses it up a little. About midway through the video, I have some exciting things that I want to share with you that are going on between other um, YouTube channels and some Facebook groups, so hang on for that. Now this little box was very cute. It looks like it might be something that a little girl could store some of her jewelry in. And so um, it almost has a primitive or a colonial look and I thought it would be a good idea to maybe paint it pink and put some air dry clay embellishments on this. I'll be using IOD molds on these. One is from uh, Village Market and the other one is Dainty Flourishes. Before I put this air dry clay into the mold, I like to use a little bit of cornstarch to help release the clay from the mold. And I also realized as I was working on this piece, uh, it's wood and it's old, and those have a tendency to bleed oils or stain uh, when you use chalk paint. So I'm gonna go back and put a coat of shellac on this, and it really does a, a nice job of sealing that before I paint it. The pink that I'm using on this piece is my favorite color of pink to use because it has a tint of gray in it. This is, uh, the color is blush pink and it's made by Rust-Oleum. And I will link that down below in the description. Mm -hmm. 
We have about three more pieces that I'm going to work on after this one, and I think my favorites are the last two. So hang on for those, but I wanted to also ask you to give this video a thumbs up if you're liking what you see so far. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Myra and some of the folks from her channel that have come over recently. Myra's channel is Farm Fresh Designs 59 and I will link that in the description below. And also I wanna thank all of you that have come over from some of the Facebook groups uh, from links that have been posted there about these videos. So additional thanks go out to Myra for letting me know about those groups. Okay, let's get back to crafting and painting. I am finishing up my molds here and I will let these dry for about five minutes, but I do want to put a coat of paint on these uh, before they start drying because they start cracking and shrinking if I don't put uh, paint or some kind of uh, coating over them. Uh, and they will shrink a little, but it's not as much as if I uh, leave them unpainted uh, until they dry. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to embellish this a little with some fabric. I have a shabby rose that I've made, and then I'm using some sort of shabby uh, cotton lace here. And I'm, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier in this video using the tool to make a shabby bow, but you could do these by hand. And so here that's what I'm doing. I'm just uh, making loops on each side. I think I did three on each side. And I'll uh, use a piece of string to tie that together. And I'll use hot glue to glue it onto the piece. I also did wet distressing on all of these pieces before I put a top coat on. And you can do that by using a wet cloth or a wet wipe and just rubbing along the edges as you would sandpaper, but it gives it a softer distressed finish. For the final touch, I'm using these half pearls that I purchased on Amazon and I will link those uh, down below as well. Here's piece number three, and actually I thought this was kind of cute when I bought it. Um, it. The color scheme is good, and I love the rooster on there, but it's made of resin, and so it, it just looks like it's made of resin. It's, um, you know, it just doesn't look like a good quality piece, but I think by putting some feet on this piece, like I did on the first one, is going to help a bit. And I have these little wooden feet that I purchased on Amazon. I'll link those down below. Um, and you may also be able to find most of these crafting supplies at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I just know that's where I got these. So I think a couple of coats of chalk paint and I will leave the rooster black. He's gonna get, a, get some white uh, paint on him initially, but uh, he'll be black uh, again. And then I'm going to use IOD stamps to give this a more French country look than a farmhouse look, which it started out having. And this rooster was really easy to paint black again because he had a raised uh, design from the background.
And these stamps are also from the Veranda set from Iron Orchid Designs. My kitty decided he needed to check on things. He didn't really want to cuddle, so he was off and on his way. This next piece is an old wine box. Um, at first I was concerned that it might be a collector's item. It's from the early or mid 60s. I did look it up online to see if it was valuable, but uh, it didn't seem to be extremely valuable. I did see some similar ones on eBay, but um, not at a very significant price. So I decided I would go ahead and uh, paint this with chalk paint. Because of the dark stain that's on this, I also used shellac to seal this so that the stain or the oils from the stain will not bleed into the chalk paint. And I added feet uh, to this one as well. These last two pieces had hinges and other hardware that I decided to remove so that the painting would look um, more professional and I wouldn't have to clean up the, uh, the hinges or fasteners. This stamp set is Iron Orchid Designs and it's one of the roses sets, but I could not find my script uh, piece that's in that set. So um, the bigger script piece that I'm using here is from a Prima Redesign set, but I will link both sets below. Um, I like them both. The, the roses uh, stamp set from IOD is has been my favorite for years, but it just goes perfectly on this piece.
here's our final piece. This made quite the transformation. It's a small jewelry box. It was in really good shape. I took the glass out of the lid uh, to prevent the uh, paint from getting on that and um, put feet on it as with the others and then gave it a shabby chic look with Again, IOD molds from the Dainty Flourishes set and a little bit of chalk paint and made quite the transformation. I did use Dainty Flourishes molds for the bottom part of this piece, but on the lid, I used some uh, items from, I think it's the Queen Bee set. It has the crown and a garland, uh, and that's what I used for the lid on this. That set is an IOD set. I'm using the same colors that I used on previous pieces. This pink is blush pink from Rust-Oleum and the ivory color is chiffon cream from Rust-Oleum. It's really easy to manipulate some of these uh, air dry clay pieces to fit your piece. This one had um, a curved edge along the bottom and I was able to just make a little tear in the top of that so that I could even out the bottom edges and still be able to uh, form the clay uh, while it's soft and uh, help it fit the piece. And now I need to do a little bit of touch up on both the clay pieces and the base of the piece. This seemed a little plain to me, so I decided to use the smaller lattice stamp from the new IOD Veranda set. It was a good size for this box, but I did tape off part of it to try and prevent it from getting ink on some of the detail. 
I did go back and clean up some of the smudged ink with wet wipes. A few areas did have to uh, have touch up with some of the pink paint, but these are shabby chic pieces and so perfection is not the goal. And this piece will be distressed. So all of that plays into the shabby chic look. The finishing detail that I'm going to add to this piece is small white dots in the center of each of the lattice pieces. The way I achieved these dots uh, so that they came out evenly was to use the tip of the paintbrush, a kind of a medium sized um, shaft of a paintbrush, and just dip that in the paint and it's really easy to put it in the center of the lattice and it just really brightens up the um, lattice design a little bit and gives it a little bit of a highlight. I used a heat gun to help these dry a little bit quicker. Here's the finished piece after I distressed it and put a top coat on it. So this is the most dramatic part. Let's look at the before and after of all these pieces. Here's the utensil holder before and then after we used veranda stamps on it. The colonial style box before and after we used IOD molds and shabby chic embellishments on it. The little resin storage container before and after. The old rustic wine box before and then after we used IOD stamps. The script is actually a prima redesign because I couldn't find my script from IOD and I thought I was organized. This last piece is a very plain, small jewelry box that was transformed by the use of IOD molds and stamps and a little bit of painting embellishment. Thank you so much for watching today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Check out the description below for links to painting supplies and Myra's channel. Please click on the pop-up at the end of my video to watch more of my videos. And I will see you in the next video.